Good morning. You're with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Um, in the interim between yesterday's conversation about 183 and today, I met with Michelle and we tried to look at what, we, um, what, what we'd heard for testimony and committee about the makeup and duties of this um, higher ed sexual violence prevention council. Uh, I know I'm not getting that name right. <laughs> But um, and so what what I'm putting on the table here and what Michelle's going to run us through is the uh, is is what I think we heard, um, including adding um, adding in some standard um, GovOps sort of best practices language about sunsetting this council after a number of years so that we don't come back in, you know, in 20 years and find that the council is still on the books, but they stopped meeting sometime in the early 20s. Um, so Michelle, thank you so much. We all have the um, document on our secondary devices. And so we'll be able to stay and um, I'll be able to see hands raised and, and all of that. So why don't you take us through um, what we have done to change the Intercollegiate Sexual Violence Prevention Council? Can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, so you should be working off of draft 2.1 um, uh, dated uh, today, this morning at 925. So um, I'm gonna move straight to page six for the council language. And you'll recall that um, the in the membership as introduced, there was a title nine coordinator from each institute of higher learning appointed by the Vermont State Colleges. And so this has been reworked based on the witness testimony and the committee discussion that it would be a Title IX coordinator and a campus-based prevention education coordinator from an institution of higher learning appointed by the chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges. And then it would be those same two type of appointments for the University of Vermont and the Association of Vermont Independent Colleges as well. Okay. Next, ch next change is top of page seven. Hold so on just a second. I've got a hand raised. Mark Higley, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I also remember, and would it be easy enough uh, to include in that uh, a Title IX coordinator uh, and his or her designee? I know that was mentioned as far as, you know, when they were talking about having one from each uh, college, but should, should that still be in there possibly? Uh, if, they, if they can, I know it's quarterly now, we're quarterly meetings, uh, but is that, is that something that we should include? So we have, um, what we have is, is the campus-based prevention and education coordinator, but the Title IX coordinator has a, a different set of duties, I guess, and, and it makes me, worry that if we if we leave it open to them to to designate that we may not be getting the 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 right person who's really in the thick of these things but i don't know michelle do you have a sense of whether there's a standard for um allowing a designee were there designees allowed in the previous iteration of this council there were not um I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. I would just say that I, I haven't seen where you have an appointing authority appoint someone and then whoever they appoint then gets to appoint someone. Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. so sometimes we'll say, you know, the defender general or his or her designee or something, you know, like that. So you kind of have uh, one opportunity to transfer yeah. to a different person. This is kind of two layers there um you could yeah. do that but i it's not uh something i've i've seen but no, and i think possibly because there is now you know one for the Vermont state colleges that 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 would help i think so okay yep fine yeah we can hope that the vermont state colleges can uh, do a little huddle ahead of time and say, you know, which of us, which of our Title IX coordinators has uh, the capacity to be involved in this. Um, John Gannon. 
We need you to unmute. I know in B1, we have the appointment by the chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges, um, but in B2 and B3, we don't identify the individual making the appointment. Um, should it be the president of the University of Vermont um, making the appointment in B2? And probably I'd have to check to see who's in charge of the Association of Vermont Independent Colleges, probably the executive director, um, but I'm guessing on that. Yeah, that's interesting. Michelle, do you have any thoughts on that? Sure. Makes makes sense. Yeah, if anybody has a line to the independent colleges and could find that out, that would just that'd be great, just in the sense of I'm uh, after we finish up. I've got to incorporate all these into the judiciary amendment and then circle back with them so they can vote it. Um, but if, if anybody knows who the contact is and can just shoot them a quick, quick email or just something like that would be great. Typically when we're in committee, when people utter a question like that out loud, there's a certain vice chair of this committee who just sort of makes these things happen. So let's give it a minute and continue on. And I bet we'll, uh, I bet we'll come up with any We're working on it. <laughs> I, I seem to remember that. So, okay, that's great. Um, so page seven, subdivision six. So in the bill is introduced, uh, there were uh, two college students appointed by the Center for Crime Victim Services on there. You wanted to um, designate that uh, one of those students um, should have lived experience as a sexual violence survivor and uh, one should represent a campus-based racial justice organization. Any questions on that committee? All right. Next one is on subdivision nine with respect to the prosecutor. And you wanted to add that the prosecutor has to have experience in prosecuting sexual violence cases and, uh, and have the attorney general be the appointing authority. Yeah, I think that that was, um, that was a, a suggestion that Rory Tebow had made that it didn't, it, it didn't, he didn't worry about who the appointing entity was, that they have a good collaboration between the criminal division at the attorney general's office and the state's attorney and that they would be able to find the right person. Uh, Rob LeClaire. Um, can we back up just a quick sec to that, the position that uh, somebody's gonna be a, a survivor of sexual assault? Mm -hmm. Um, that seems like an awful hard question to ask somebody. And well, the Center for Crime Victim Services probably already has contact with victims of crime. It, okay, but is there, I mean, is there anything that's going to make that person stand out that they're there because they're representing that position for that reason? I understand the intent behind it. I don't, I'm, that's not the issue I have. It's like, how do you do that? Um, it has been my experience that victims of sexual assault have a, a wide range of reactions and abilities to step up and advocate afterward. And that many, I have met personally, many victims of sexual assault who uh, who really want to step up and to get involved in activities that can prevent future sexual violence. And so, um, you know, if we were looking for 20 appointees who all were victims um, of sexual violence, I might worry that we'd have trouble recruiting. But, um, but if we're looking for one, I would guess there will be a scramble. And um, Michelle? Um, I just wanted to share, so I, I did present just in draft form these recommendations to judiciary this morning, letting them know that they weren't final and that you would be talking about them uh, later this morning. And, uh, and actually, one of the Judiciary Committee members asked that same question. And uh, Selena Colburn was on the uh, committee that issued the report that this proposal is based on. And she said that there were uh, three survivor appointees on that committee. And she said they, uh, 
I was going to say, fortunately, unfortunately, had a um, did not have any problem finding uh, people who wanted to serve in that role. Okay, that's fine. I just, yep. John Gannon. Just going back to the independent college things, um, president. President. Okay. Thank you. That didn't even take till we got through the end of our draft. Thank you, John. So the next one is uh, on uh, subdivision C2, so line 17 and 18. And my understanding is that there was concern uh, from some of the witnesses about the use of uh, climate survey. And so this is just tweaks the language a little bit so that um, the council is responsible for an annual review of trends in aggregate data collected by the institutions of higher learning regarding sexual violence on campus. Look good, folks. Next change is on page eight. There's a new subdivision F4, uh, indicating that the council is to meet quarterly. Go ahead, Mark. So on that same page, go up to line one. And I can't remember if it was Wendy from UVM or not, but and maybe you folks can help me out with that, but uh, there was a concern about using the words best practices. Um, it, does anybody remember that and what those, uh, <laughs> what they could possibly use instead of that? Yeah, I remember uh, Wendy expressing some concern about that, uh, that phrase and the implication that that phrase would, um, would trigger a look outside of the state of Vermont to look at national experts. And I, I have to say, if we don't have a Title IX coordinator in this state who is looking at national best practices um, <laughs> releases or, or seminars or workshops on a regular basis, then I would hope that, <laughs> that this would prompt that activity to happen more regularly. But I suspect that we have Title IX coordinators who are already um, looking at national organizations for, uh, for resources on best practices. No, I agree. I, I couldn't think of, uh, I don't know if she used something like educational or whatever, but I think, yeah, best practices clarifies it better. And Michelle, best practices doesn't, doesn't necessarily have a specific um, level of expectation, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's sort of a, a catch-all term, meaning look around and see who's doing the best job. Exactly. And we do use it frequently in, in drafting, which is exactly the, what, what you said, which is to see, you know, kind of do a survey, look who's, what, what folks are doing, what's the latest information on the efficacy of strategies and, 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 to, and to consider those best practices. Yep. Thanks for catching that, Mark. And then uh, the last one is on page nine, and this is a repeal of that section in seven years. So that you can take a look at it and see whether or not people still think it's valuable. All right, any questions from committee members on the language that we're putting in front? I'll give you a moment to just review any notes that you might have taken yesterday if you heard something that you wonder if it should be reflected here. All right, I'm not seeing anybody diving in. Um, Shall we do a formal committee vote or shall we do a straw poll, folks? Um, Let's and, vote it. All right. So, how this is a vote on a recommendation. Uh, we don't actually have possession of the bill, but this is recommendation on um, section, is it section, the entirety of sections five and six? I think, if I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. Recommendation on sections five and six of H-183. 
So moved. Draft 2.1. Super. When you're ready, Hal. Nobody's going to answer you because they can't hear you. <laughs> Roll call shall begin. Gannon. Yes. Mariki. Yes. LeClaire. Yes. Hooper. Yes. Colston. Yes. Anthony. Yes. Behotsky. Yes. LeFay. Yes. Higley. Yes. McCarthy. Yes. Copeland Hans. Yes. Eleven zero zero. Great. Um, Michelle, is it your understanding that the Ju Judiciary Committee would like one of us to come and talk with them about it? Or do you feel like because you presented the draft form of it that, um, I mean, I, I'm happy to make myself available when they come back to it this afternoon, but um, I don't know if you have a you know, sense. I'm sure they'd always love to see you, but I, I don't I don't think it's necessary. Uh, when I went through the what you had for recommendations, which are, you know, you didn't change anything. Uh, they seem comfortable with everything. There weren't any particular concerns or uh, okay. anything like that with that. So I will contact Madam Chair of the Judiciary Committee and let her know that I'm happy to join if she needs me to. And otherwise we will keep our nose to the grindstone here in committee and, and get our work done. Thank you, Michelle, for, okay. for helping with this project. And All right. we'll see you soon. All right, I'm sure you will after crossover. I'm working on some right over there in the Senate. <laughs> I hear there's some things coming our way. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> right, okay, thanks. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Um, so committee, we have uh, we have three other issues that we need to take up this afternoon. Um, it, it, was I detecting in committee discussion earlier that maybe there's an appetite to see if we can start at 12.30 and be done earlier as opposed to waiting until one at this point? Okay. Um, I, I so agree. I'm just I was curious if there's anything ready to go that we could do right now before we break for lunch, but maybe not. Well, it's entirely possible that that it's, I mean, the product is ready to go. It's whether we have um, Ledge Council ready to go. So perhaps Andrea could send an email to Amarin and Tucker to see if either of them is available now and or at 1230. So Mark. No, I guess, uh, you know, as, as far as the uh, youth council goes, um, I'd really like to be able to support this. Um, and I think there's, there's, you know, one little addition that, that I had mentioned uh, in uh, when we were taking testimony from folks that they didn't seem to object to. And that would be, you know, a uh, uh, F section, which would include Vermont traditions and conservation. Uh, if I can just, you know, bring that out now to maybe move things along, let people think about it. But uh, again, it's something I did mention during testimony and, and I'd like to see that, see that in there at least for consideration. So orient me again, are you talking about um, adding a, a subcommittee to the list of subcommittees that the students presented to us? Right, it's under the uh, standing committees. So there's, there's already an A, B, C, D, E. This would be F. Okay. Um, as the students, let me just see if I can understand a little bit more about how we might accomplish this. As the students were describing it, I thought I heard them saying that they had had a uh, a discussion over a number of meetings this past summer, um, and they had had a whole bunch of ideas for subcommittees on their list, and they had narrowed it down to these top five. And so, I, you know, I guess before we before we prescribe to them the addition of another subcommittee, I guess I would wonder if if there's a way that the student led organizing could weigh in on where that where those concepts fell in the in the voting that they already did. Um, or I guess I would conversely ask what happens if 
the membership of the council uh, self selects and nobody selects to go in the that subcommittee because it wasn't something that was that that the youth felt was important. I don't know. Um, so I guess well, I that's what, well, that's where I have a concern. I think that it is important to some youth may not have got on their list, but uh, you know, I, I think it's a simple enough ask. Uh, if, if we're looking for uh, use, you know, input into some of these issues, that for me uh, is a big one. So, yeah. um, is, and I can I can go on about my other concerns, but you know, again, we don't have the time right now. But that's something for me. If you want me to to sign on and come out with this, you know, a, a unanimous vote or whatever, uh, that's a pretty simple change in my mind. Yeah, and I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that we can um, respect your suggestion, but also respect the, the process that the youth used in, in bringing this proposal to us. Um, so I well, this is, this is what we're here for. Yes. They, why, why should they, as students, bring up forward a proposal when uh, other bills come before us and we make changes? So right. again, I, I have no concern with that, Delilah. You know, I mentioned it in testimony. Delilah didn't have a problem with it, so I don't. I don't see what the hesitation is. But yeah. again, looks like there's a lot of hands up. Yes, Tanya Vihovsky is next. Um, I do have way in here, although my hand went up for a different issue. I think um, I, I hear what you're saying, Madam Chair, and I also hear what you're saying, um, Representative Higley. And what I recall Delilah saying is that while she personally agreed the democratic process they went through, just that didn't rise to the surface. And I, I feel if we are putting something out to hear youth concerns, telling them what their concerns should be sort of flies in the face of that. So I that gives me pause. I also have a different thing, but I want to let others on this issue go first. Okay, leave your hand up. Uh, Sam Lefebvre. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also echo what Representative Higley is saying. Um, I feel that we have legislation come before us all the time and there's changes made. Um, and this is again, um, just an ask that we're having um, and I'd also, if we're looking at it, like to see what they did vote on to see if this was even an option, because um, it might not have risen to the top because it might not have been considered. And if it is considered that application goes out and other children could see that this is an option for something for them to weigh in on, that might inquire new applications. Um, so that, that, that's my two cents. Thank you very much. All right, who's next on my list? Bob Hooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it, it stuck in my mind, and I could be an error, that uh, during questioning that the students said they had a, a huge range of things, and that was one of the things, but it got very little interest from the group. Um, I could, of course, be wrong. Uh, I see Hal's head shaking, and he's always right, so. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I certainly would not object to not giving something specific as in a you will do this, but maybe uh, a general piece of language that says such other subjects as the group may get involved in if it doesn't increase the funding or anything like that, that substantially changes. I mean, halfway through the bill, who knows? But at this point, I, I don't agree with the argument on this particular case that we change things all the time because this is sort of a different source coming forward. This is a request. I view this this thing as sort of a boys or girls state thing on a, a statewide level where we're engendering people to gain skills and get their sea legs under them for sitting in these chairs someday. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Peter Anthony. Uh, maybe uh, any of you folks can go back to the list of standing committees. I'm trying to find a middle ground here. <clears throat> um, I worried at the time that the list was generated, th that the number that were already there began to be um, 
large relative to the number of participants already, never mind the uh, ad hoc committees that were provided for. So I guess I'm searching for a way to put environmental conservation or environmental values or land conservation or some phrase like that and tuck that into one of the uh, existing proposed standing committees as a way to, to, to get us through um, Mark's issue, uh, because I think it is uh, univer universally, it is substantially held by adults and youths that Vermonters care very much about their place in the natural world, which is why I proposed having one person from every county. I figured that was a way to sort of get our arms around the diversity amongst the youth of Vermont. I'm sorry I didn't go, it didn't go far enough to satisfy Mark, but that was the intent. Other discussion on this, this question? <clears throat> Um, we don't need to. We don't need to to necessarily settle on a course of action at this moment. But I would like us to discuss this and other things, um, so that we can hopefully take a look at a at a final draft later. Um, Mike Merwicki. Sure, uh, I appreciate the the concerns shared here, and uh, I will come down again on. This is where the, the students came from. Uh, if we're going to start imposing what we want in this, it stops being student led. And the idea behind this is that this is gonna be student led and it's up to us to listen to them rather than the other way. So uh, I think if things come up in an organic fashion, then uh, I'm not gonna get in the way of them. Um, but in, in this instance, I think if we open the door to start imposing what we want into this it becomes a very different a uh, very different bill. Uh, Hal Colston. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel that uh, the top of page five, uh, section C, uh, you know, gather input from Vermont use through surveys or polls. I mean, it seems to me as this thing evolves, if that becomes a concern, or uh, a, a need that, that could be borne out from their process of, of hearing from their youth. So um, I, I, I think that could allow some flexibility. And, and I agree with others that I, I don't think this is the right approach to impose our adult thinking on, on their, their, their vision, their goals to, to have voice and agency. Other committee discussion on this? All right, um, Tanya Vihovsky. Thank you. I'm wondering um, in that subsection C, if a simple addition of gathering input from Vermont youth to inform subcommittees, if, if that sort of gets at that, we're gonna continue to gather the information and if this rises to the surface, we'll add a subcommittee, not we, but they. Mm if there's a place in there to really indicate that, that that will be a process to name and build those subcommittees. We could direct them to, <laughs> to reevaluate their subcommittees based on the input from youth surveys or polls, um, if that would help. Any other committee discussion on this topic before we shift gears to 154. Tanya, was your hand up on a different part of the bill from earlier? It was up on 154. Okay. Um, all right, so let's keep chewing on this. Let's look for a way that we can um, uh, try, to, try to thread this needle here of, of, of really asking them to be open to uh, to youth um, who have uh, focus and uh, place value on um, Vermont traditions and traditional uh, activities and see if we can find a way to reflect that in this. 